Welcome home, children of God. The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment of silence to center ourselves on God. All those able, please rise for our call to worship. My help comes from the Lord. The Lord will not let our feet be moved. The Lord is our shade at our right hands. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep our lives. From this time on and forevermore, let us pray. God of mercy, you are full of tenderness, slow to anger, rich in mercy, and always ready to forgive. Grant us to cling to Christ, that in every way we may prove to be your loving children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
please be seated. Friends, if we say this morning that we have no sin, then we are only deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, then God, who is faithful and is just, will forgive all of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in penitence and in faith, let us now confess our sin before Almighty God, first as one body together, and then with a brief time of silent prayer. As one body, we pray together. O oh God, you who are truly merciful, forgive the world for its cruelty. Forgive us for being complicit in sin that hurts you, your creation, other people, and ourselves. Help us to amend our ways. Write your will upon our hearts and form our dreams with your love that we might become more faithful disciples of Jesus. And now please join me in our responsive assurance of pardon. In Jesus, God rescues us. But according to God's mercy. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Before I invite you to pass the peace of Christ, please be mindful that we're trying to contain germs to the best of our ability. So rather than sharing the peace of Christ by shaking hands, please consider doing an elbow pump, a sign of peace, however you might communicate your love and caring for each other without shaking hands. So the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please greet each other with the peace of Christ. I don't know about y'all, but that just feels weird, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm used to hugging and handshaking. It's just so weird to bump elbows. I feel like we're doing some kind of strange initiation. Um, well, a special welcome to visitors among us. We hope and pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. I invite all of you at this time to please sign the pew register, and if need be, pass the register down the pews. And I will call your attention to some announcements, um, most of which can be found in your goldenrod color insert. But first, a big thank you to our children's choirs and our wonderful and devoted teachers. It was awesome. Thank you. Y'all do such a great job. We are grateful for your ministry here. Thank you. A correction, the Memorial Presbyterian Church third and fifth graders today, the outing is not at 2 p.m., but it's actually 3 p.m. So please, those of you who are bringing third and fifth graders, note that it's 3 o'clock for bowling and fellowship and not 2 o'clock. 
Note that we do need some ushers for our Lenten concerts. And Louise Donovan, where's Louise this morning? Louise is right here. So after service, I want to see at least four of y'all right down here in front of the baptismal font. And I will be watching from the east door. <laughs> Louise needed at least four, right, Louise? Maybe five. So we want to see five of y'all down here to help with ushering at our Lenten concerts on Wednesdays at 1245. So Louise will be giving me names. So... Look forward to seeing you help with that. We have the Taste of MPC Youth Fundraiser coming up for all of you cooks. We also have a Polish and Clean the Sanctuary Workday schedule. This has never before happened to my knowledge, and it is impossible for our incredible maintenance staff to keep up with the robust uh, facilities and keeping everything the way we like it. So we are going to ask folks to come out. You'll note that it's on April 4th at 9 a.m. for just a couple hours and you can help keep this place beautiful. Please contact Susie Goddard. Her email address is in the um, announcement and let her know that you will be there. At this time, I'd like to invite all of God's little ones forward for a moment with Miss Susan Connor, who is also our chair and the elder of stewardship. Good morning, good morning. I was so happy to walk in and see the choir singing today because I knew there would be lots of kids here. Good morning, good morning. Come on down. Good morning. You guys did a great job. Nice singing. It was a great way to start the service. All right, come on down. So who can tell me what season we're in? What season are we in? Spring, that's right. Good job, spring. So I brought with me this morning a sign of spring. I'll hold it up so you guys can see it too. It is, this is a branch from a redbud tree in my yard that has been brown all winter, but for the last about two weeks, maybe three weeks now, it's been covered with these beautiful red, purple, purplish pink flowers, purplish pink, pink flowers. And they're only going to last maybe another week or so before the whole tree will be covered in leaves. And you can see them. I'll pass this around, but you can see the leaves coming on part of the branch. And you guys can pass that around if you want, if you want to share it, if you want to look at it closer. And so pretty soon, the whole tree is going to be covered in leaves. Do you want to look at that? You guys can look at it if you want. <laughs> so... And then the tree will be covered in leaves all year, right? And then the leaves in the fall, the leaves will turn brown, and then the whole process will start again next year around this time, right? So, can I, and I'll take that. Can I take that back? Okay, and then you guys can see it afterwards. <laughs> so why do you think God created spring? Why do you guys think God created spring? I think he created it to remind us of rebirth. Because in today's Bible lesson, in the book of John, Jesus is having a conversation with a man named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus believes that God, that Jesus is God's son, but he's questioning how the rest of us are ever going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Like, how does that happen? And Jesus tells Nicodemus that he's right. You can't get into the kingdom of heaven without being born of water and spirit. And Nicodemus is confused, and he says, but wait, I'm already old. I can't crawl back into my mother's belly and be born again, right? And Jesus says, he tells Nicodemus that he's missing the point. He says, in order to be born of spirit, all you have to do is have faith in God. And all who believe in him will have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. And today's lesson has, includes one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. So I'm going to read it to you guys here again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty comforting that God loves us all that much that he sent Jesus here so that we can have eternal life with God in heaven. So let's put our hands together and bow our heads and we'll close with a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us. 
and sending us Jesus to teach us how to live and have faith in you. Thank you for the signs of spring, which remind us that to be born of the Spirit, all we have to do is believe in you. We love you, God, and all God's children say, amen, amen. You guys can get your worship back. as we prepare to hear God's holy word this morning, let us first go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, our helper, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. By your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would open our minds, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led deeper into your truth and taught your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4a, and may be found on page 9 in your pew Bible. I'd also like to note that this is the text from which today's sermon is drawn. Please listen now to God's holy word. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you too will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, just as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel lesson comes from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, or where it goes. 
So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It was May the 8th, 1991, and I had just graduated from Flagler College. Most of my friends were either looking for jobs or getting ready for graduate school. Myself, I was driving to Colorado. I was going west. I was following author Horace Greeley's advice, which I had stumbled upon in the Flagler Library late one evening during my senior year. I remember being in the library, the old library, for finals, but preoccupied with my post-graduation plans. I had a lot on my mind, by which I mean I was submersed in the study of philosophy and ideas. All I really wanted to do was read and think. And so, after reading Horace Greeley's line, go west, young man, and grow up with the country, I felt this sudden and certain desire to leave my home state of Florida, move to Colorado, and learn to rock climb and mountaineer. In either a moment of great clarity or intense insanity, I decided to move out west to think about life, look for work, and see this thing I'd heard about called snow. Well, last week I was reminded of my journey west while studying our lesson from Genesis. As you heard, the Lord came to this guy named Abram, who later becomes Abraham. He comes to this guy named Abram and told him to pack his belongings, to leave his home and his daddy's country. It would have been for any of us a major decision to uproot yourself at 75 and go to an undetermined place with your wife and family based upon hearing a voice, is no small ordeal. I can only imagine his conversation with his wife, Sarai. Well, honey, it was like this. I was tending the sheep, and then I heard this voice tell me that we need to pack up and move west. Oh, I know it makes no sense. But this voice, it was just so darn compelling. The voice told me that if we do this thing, then we will be blessed. We will be able to have children. We will be the parents of a whole new nation. 
And then you have to imagine Sarai, the wife, responding. I see her laughing in my head. You've got to be kidding me, Abram. We've been barren without children our entire married life. And now you're going to tell me that if we pack up and go west, we're going to have kids? You want me to uproot and follow you in some voice? to some place we've never been and never heard about? Are you kidding me? The blessing of conceiving and bearing children is highly conditional and does not come without cost for Abram and Sarai. The Lord says to Abram, if you pick up and move, then you will have children. If you want to get beyond barrenness, then you must relocate. If you want a new life, then you must trust me. If you want a new possibility, then you must take a leap of faith. Unlike Abram and Sarai, when I went west, I was not following the voice of God because, as many of you know, I did not believe in God. I was following the voice of my dreams, the voice of my heart. Looking back, I can certainly see that God, despite my unbelief, was behind the whole thing. God is funny that way, you know. Even when you don't believe, or even when your faith is real small, God is still at work. Our lack of faith does not and cannot hinder God. Lack of faith cannot stop the God who created the heavens and the earth. God is unstoppable. I am always deeply impressed by Abram and Sarai's leap of faith, their willingness to step beyond their comfort zones, move beyond what is reasonable and rational to follow a voice. It's my judgment that much of faith in life is like that. The willingness to step beyond our comfort zones and follow the voice of God, or the voice of our dreams, which are sometimes one and the same. All new life demands some type of pilgrimage. By this I mean following God can often, often demand a relocation of sorts, whether this relocation is spiritual, psychological, or physical, if we are to follow the voice of God and or the voice of our dreams, then we must be willing to take a leap of faith. You see, in order to experience God's blessing, Abram and Sarai, they had to learn the language of transformation. They had to learn the language of letting go and letting God. But you know as well as I do that God's language is more often like poetry than a policy manual. God gives us clues and hints like a bread trail of love, and we are invited to follow. Look at Abram and Sarai. God whispers a direction and offers a blessing, but the blessing and the direction are cloaked in secrecy. God alone knows what's going to happen with them. The same is true for us. Abram and Sarai, they must pack up and go, strike out into the great unknown if they are to receive the blessing. 
because the greatest blessings of God often require us to take a leap of faith, strike out into the unknown. During Lent, we make our way to the cross of Christ. As we move into the unknown, which is another way of saying as we move into life, I close this morning with a prayer of St. Brendan the Navigator, an Irish seaman of the fifth century. His, his prayer begins like this. Dear God, help me to journey beyond the familiar and into the unknown. Give me the faith to leave old ways and break fresh ground with you. And so, sisters and brothers, may it be for us as well. To God be the glory, today and forever. Amen. remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed, our church's oldest creed, which is found in your bulletin. As one body we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, 
Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Now let us join our hearts in prayer with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Mighty God, God who made the heavens and the earth, God who made the day and the night, God who made each one of the stars and calls them by name, remind us that you have also lovingly and carefully created each one of us. You know the number of hairs on our heads, and you know the words on our own tongues before we even speak. You know us, and just like Abraham, you call us. You call us to trust in you and to follow where you lead. We need you, O oh God to remind us that you are faithful to your promises, that where you call us, you are there, with us on each step of our journey. Help us to trust in you. Loving God, we pray today for the world around us. As the spread of this coronavirus continues, we ask that Jesus, the healer of all, would be present with those who are ill, and we pray for your protection to be with medical professionals as they care for the sick. May the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide our world leaders, and may the peace of Jesus Christ replace any anxiety that we may have and guard our hearts and our minds. God, we pray today for our loved ones, for those who are in the hospital, those who are homebound, and for those who are struggling with physical and mental illness. We pray for those who are unemployed and who are worried about making ends meet. We remember those in our lives who are dealing with deep grief, with addiction, and with loss. We pray for the comfort and the peace of the Holy Spirit to be especially near. Faithful God, we pray also this day for ourselves and for the concerns on our own hearts. When we wonder where the path before us might lead, we ask you to remind us that you do fulfill your promises, that you are faithful. We rejoice together in Jesus' own promise to be with us always to the very end of the age. 
and now as one body together, we pray the sacred prayer that Jesus taught to his own disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, scripture reminds us that it is better to give than it is to receive. So with grateful and joyful hearts, we now give back to God with our tithes and our offerings.
please join me in our responsive prayer of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are holy, O God of love, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you, Almighty God, for the promise of eternal life. That we may live for you and love as he loved. Amen. Amen.
My sisters and brothers, I charge you this day to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of God Almighty be with each of you today and throughout eternity. Amen. Amen.